Here is the drive belt I ordered a while ago. The fact that it took forever to send, though I'm sure they'll blame on the coronavirus, is mitigated by uh, the fact that they appear to have sent two of them. So, let's take this apart again. Having a magnetised screwdriver helps. In almost all of these designs, there's another little lug just down there that holds the transformer against the outer casing. And that will need to be unscrewed as well. Now the hard part. These things are designed to have, like, zero tolerance. I 
she was not so difficult. Reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. Duh. Now while I'm here I'll explain how this works. There are four fundamental parts. A heater element, a motor, the high voltage board, and the low voltage board. The low voltage board contains a mocha processor. This is probably something in the series of uh, a SAM88 clone or an 8051 clone. And it controls Things such as the temperature, the type of breads, whether or not they're delays, more fancy versions have a screen there, and so on. The low voltage part also controls the high voltage parts. There are two ways of controlling. There's a relay here, and that principally looks after the heater element. The heater element serves two purposes. The first is to bring temperature up to something around 30 or so degrees for the proving stage. And the second is to bring temperature up to something around 160, 170 degrees for the baking stage. Then there's a transistor. The transistor controls the current to the motor. The motor's function is to turn the paddle. And you'll see the motor turns a lot more than the paddle does. That's, that helps to provide torque. You would have seen when it was upside down that the, the wheel underneath is much bigger than the wheel here. Because when you're pushing a big lump of dough around it, it takes some effort. The other part of the puzzle is that there, which is a temperature-dependent resistor, a semester. That is an analog device that is fed back into the microprocessor so that it knows what the temperature of the cooking area is. Finally, the two little things down here are fuses. If the temperature gets too hot, click, it finishes, it's done. One thing to note is that when that goes on like that, this part here, the baking section, can reach, as I said, about 170 degrees. And all the electronics are right next to it, without much in the way of protection against the heat. A gotcha that you'll need to be aware of when reassembling the device is that this is a really tight fit here. It may help to align the front end and put the two screws in there, and then for the back. Gently ease it into place, like that. Careful not to tip this up too sharply or the glass piece there might fall out. This again is fiddly to get into place.
reassembled. At those settings. There we go. Well, technical hitch. I have the flour, I have milk, I have salt, I have eggs. What I don't have, what I can't find, is my yeast. So, I was going to uh, put this through its paces, see how it turned out, but uh, clearly not today. I'll bore you with another video another time. Bye-bye.